What is going on guys and welcome back to the film room and with that first big wave of free agency seemingly coming to an end and now that we have a good understanding of what our team or roster is going to look like heading into the draft we're going to take a look back at the past couple of weeks and recap each and every move this Dallas front office has made and what it means for this football team. Definitely do not forget to subscribe. We're going to be breaking down the film of the likes of Keanu Neal and Demonte Casey in these coming days, so you definitely do not want to miss out on that. I appreciate you all for stopping by, and let's go on and get into it. Going to start out with what Cowboys of this past season we will see in a different uniform in this upcoming season. First departure we're going to hit on is that of Andy Dalton. Dalton signed a one-year, fully guaranteed $10 million deal with the Chicago Bears, and, well, good for him. Paying your backup quarterback $10 million would not have been a move that I would have been in favor out of us, and it seems like Dalton will actually be the QB1 in Chicago. Like, actually, actually. I mean, the Bears tweeted this out, so take that for what you will. Uh, don't see this making too much of a difference, because if we are going to make a Super Bowl run, we are going to need a healthy Dak Prescott. Speaking of departures that don't really make too much of a difference, we lost the likes of swing tackle Cam Irvin to the Panthers, tight end Blake Bell to the Chiefs, and linebacker Joe Thomas to the Texans. Oh, and also Tyrone Crawford retired. Uh, he recently announced that. I mean, not to be mean, but the guy significantly lacked production in recent years, and it didn't seem likely that we'd be bringing him back anyways. So best of luck in retirement to Tyrone Crawford. Always appreciative of the work and uh, what he brought to this team in terms of leadership. Back to Irving Bell and Thomas, though, we were immediately able to address the Irving loss with the signing of Ty and Secchi from the Buffalo Bills, who will fill that exact void that Irving left at that swing tackle spot. Looking at the loss of Blake Bell, I do not think it should be something we should lose sleep over with the return of Blake Jarwin in this upcoming season and the emergence this past season of tight end Dalton Schultz. So uh, happy trails to him, too. And lastly, Joe Thomas, a guy who I will forever die on the hill saying he is better than Jalen Smith, signed with our Texas rival, the Houston Texans. I do think Thomas can both be better than Jalen, but also be someone that we should not be panicking to see gone. It is unlikely Thomas would have seen the field much anyways because of the pedestal that Jalen Smith is for some reason put on. And while he was a great depth piece for that linebacking core, I think the development of Francis Bernard and the signing of Keanu Neal will help patch that up, but we will get more into that later. Getting into some departures that definitely changed the structure of this team, we're first going to look at the Cheeto Ouzie signing a three-year, $21.7 million deal with the Cincinnati Bengals. I do feel as if this was a pretty sizable loss to this Dallas secondary. While I do not think it would have made sense for us to sign Cheeto to a size uh, or a deal of that size, I do wish we could have brought him back some way. I think he would have been a solid in this Dan Quinn cover three scheme. And also, we may have had more options uh, available to us in terms of where we go in that 10th pick. Even with the re-signing of Jordan Lewis, I would be very concerned with who lines up opposite of Trayvon Diggs if we do not go with Sertain, Farley, or Horn at that 10th pick. I think keeping Cheeto would have given us that flexibility I think we needed at the outside corner spot, but it is not something I would have felt good about doing at $7.5 million a year. Staying on track with the secondary, we also saw the departure of Xavier Woods over this past weekend. Woods signed a one-year deal with the Minnesota Vikings for $2.3 million. And I know many of you guys were likely happy to see Woods part way with the Cowboys, but I do think the light that was shed upon Woods this past season was a lot dimmer because of the comments he made halfway through the season about giving effort. I do think getting Woods at the price the Vikings got would have been a really good deal for the Cowboys, actually. I think having Woods for super cheap and spending a second-round pick on a safety would have been a good move for that position. However, I am very happy with the addition of DeMonte Casey, and after hearing the news that he'll be coming in on only $1.12 million in that loan year of his contract and only 250000 of that guaranteed, this makes this signing a bit more exciting, and we'll get more into it later in the video. Another player that is not returning to the Cowboys this upcoming season is going to be that of Alden Smith. While Smith was a fan favorite, I do think his production went down significantly after the first quarter of the season. And while Smith did have a great story and will certainly be a guy I root for wherever he goes, his departure should not be blown out of proportion. A full season of Randy Gregory should make Cowboys fans forget about Alden Smith rather quickly. 
Lastly, we have to talk about the most important departure from the Cowboys roster, and that is LP Leducier, also known as the GOAT, the GOAT. Uh, in all serious though, guys, uh, Cowboys fans, uh, we all need to stop freaking out about this. His replacement, Jake McQuaid, has made two Pro Bowls as a long snapper, so clearly he's doing something right. LP still, of course, is the GOAT, but let's not lose our lids over a long snapper. Now, getting into the Cowboys, we are bringing back on new deals and the free agents that are going to be getting that star slapped on their helmet. It is only right to do so with talking about Dak Prescott. I cannot be happier making this video that I do not have to worry and gripe in talking about the future of Dak Prescott with this football team because Dak is locked down in a contract that is very friendly for the current state of the salary cap as well as where I believe that salary cap will be in the future. And I do believe Dak being locked down prior to free agency allowed us to make many of the decisions we made to get this roster to where we wanted it to be heading into the draft. Looking at some of the key pieces we added, I want to start with Keanu Neal because this was arguably my favorite signing by the Cowboys so far this offseason. A lot of people were confused by this signing, initially seeing that Neal has primarily fit into defenses as a box safety, and well, that's what we see or at least hope the role of Donovan Wilson ends up being for the majority of the 2021 season, seeing how that best fits his skill set. However, Neal was not brought in to be a box safety or even a safety in general. He was brought in to fill out our linebacking core. It's likely that we will see Neal in a role where he's filling run gaps, blitzing off the edge, or dropping into a zone where he'll lurk over the middle of the field. I think this role will fit Neal's fast and physical nature very well, and I expect the transition to be seamless. We'll get more into the role I expect Neil to play in a film analysis video I am posting of him tomorrow at noon central, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. I think the next most important addition the Cowboys made so far in this free agency also came in a package from the Atlanta secondary, and for the price we got this so-called package for, it should be considered stealing. It took a while for the details of Devontae Casey's contract to come in, but as of yesterday, it was reported the Cowboys got the man who led the league in interceptions in 2018 for $1.127 million in that loan year of his contract, and only 250000 of that being guaranteed. Of course, there is concern with the fifth-year vet coming off an Achilles tear in this past season, but there was a shot the Cowboys absolutely had to take here with KZ, having the potential to fill perhaps the largest void in this Dallas defense at that free safety spot. I still believe the Cowboys should draft a free safety in the second or third round of this year's draft, but this is absolutely a great start for what hopes to be a significantly improved defense in this coming season. We will also have an in-depth analysis of his film dropping this weekend to get more into detail on all of this. Staying with the secondary, another move I was happy to see made was the re-signing of Jordan Lewis. Lewis stayed on with the team for a cheap signing of a three-year, $16.5 million deal. I was happy to see Lewis return because of how well I think this Dan Quinn scheme will actually fit him. I feel as if Lewis thrives in zone in comparison to man, and I expect when Lewis finds himself on the field in this coming season, it will be mostly in a zone. I also appreciate the versatility that Jordan Lewis brings to the table. He had experience on the outside in his early years before moving into the slot, and with the departure of Cheeto in the presence of Anthony Brown, it's not unlikely that we might see Lewis head back to the perimeter at times in this upcoming season. I also think there's potential for Lewis to find himself competing for snaps at the free safety spot, considering his instinctual play and zone-friendly skill set, but that does seem less likely with the signing of Devontae Casey. I also do not expect him at the top of this defense at all this season unless injuries at the position force the Cowboys' hand to do so, as it did in the latter parts of this past season. All in all, though, happy to see Lewis back, and I do expect him to have an improved year in this Dan Quinn scheme. One last signing I feel was important enough to head into discussion about was that of Brent Irving from the Chicago Bears. Urban signed a one-year fully guaranteed $1.75 million contract with the Cowboys, and I expect him to have a Tyrone Crawford-like role in this defense. The signing may not have seemed of ultra-importance at the time of it, but it has slowly developed into one with the retirement of Tyrone Crawford and the inevitable departure of Alden Smith hitting the news. 
Urban is a guy like Crawford and Smith that can rotate inside to the three-tech spot and then transition outside to the edge. I expect Urban to see a quality amount of time at both spots in this Dallas defense, and while I do not expect him to be a consistent source of pass rush like that of D-Law or Randy Gregory, I am very excited to see what he can bring to what was a crippled run defense this past season, as I expect that to be his area of expertise along this defensive front. Going to briefly hit on the remaining additions in signings this Dallas front office made. Starting with CJ Goodwin, definitely excited to see him come back on a two-year deal. He has been a staple of this special teams unit and has had some very memorable and impactful plays from this past season. Also saw him come in to spy Jalen Hurts in our Week 16 matchup against Philly, and he did a very good job in doing so. Also, very glad to see wide receiver Noah Brown coming back. He's cheap and has shown enough flashes to go ahead and give the green light on bringing him back for me and clearly the front office as well. Brown is also a very willing blocker that can come in to some tight sets, some goal line sets, and lay his body on the line, and also a solid option at the fourth or fifth receiver spot. Catches the ball well, has shown he can run after the catch and make some plays in that area as well. Moving into the free agent signings, we talked earlier of the so-called replacements for various Cowboys that have departed. To counter the departure of Cam Irvin, we were able to bring in swing tackle Ty Inseki, as I had mentioned. One-year deal will be able to provide a very similar fit to the puzzle that is the Cowboys offensive line and be that swing tackle guy that we need to bring in, that depth piece that we need if one of our tackles goes down. Terrell Basham was also brought over from the New York Jets on a two-year deal to come off the edge and play as a rotational piece at that defensive end spot. Hopefully, he will help mend the eventual departure of Alden Smith. And of course, to replace long snapper LP Laducier, we brought in former Pro Bowler and Rams long snapper Jake McQuaid on a one-year deal, reuniting him with his former special teams coordinator, John Bones Fassel. Also, some guys we signed in this free agency that I think are pretty much coin flips to even make the roster, depending on how we draft Uh, Our defensive tackle, Carlos Watkins, in safety, J. Ron Curse. Both signed very cheap one-year deals, and as I am expecting us to add at least one safety in defensive tackle in the draft, do not be surprised if these guys do not find their way to the 53-man. Lastly, I do think the Cowboys have one more splash lined up in free agency. Well, they haven't really made a splash yet, but I guess this would kind of be one. I do believe they fully have their sights set on linebacker K.J. Wright from the Seahawks. Wright is a free agent that seems to be intent on moving on from Seattle, and there have been reports of communication and heavy interest coming both from Wright and the Dallas front office. Do not be surprised to see a deal come in soon to reunite the Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champ with his former defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn. Uh, If this does get done, I do expect this to be the last move we make before we set our sights on the draft. Well, guys, that about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I appreciate you all for stopping by. I hope that I was able to provide some insight on this first big wave of free agency for the Cowboys. And while there were not any crazy splashes made by this team, I was happy to see a lot of the moves we made and do feel we are a much better roster on paper than we were a few weeks ago. Definitely comment below, though, and let me know what you think of all these moves in free agency, whether you would have wanted some guys to come back that maybe left, whether you would have wanted us to sign some guys that we didn't, if you're happy with the guys that we did sign or not. And also, do not forget to subscribe, as I have Keanu Neal and Demonte Casey in-depth film analysis on the way this week so you definitely don't want to miss out on those the first one is going to be coming tomorrow at noon central like i said and that is going to be covering keanu neal once again guys thank you all for stopping by and staying until the end and i will see you on the next video